Naples Tower, this is helicopter 357 Lima Hotel requesting upper taxi to spot Charlie with Alpha. Hey guys, Rob here from the Heli Skunk Works and we're uh, continuing with uh, the Blade 120 SR and this is going to be the setup and first flight video. So we'll get right to it here. Um, what, we're, uh, what I have on the table here is I have the 120 itself and I have the 500 milliamp battery. Uh, you would have charged this on your charger, naturally. I'd like to point out that uh, if you have this heli, which maybe you do or you don't, but you are either in uh, two categories of people, I'm willing to bet. Either you are a, you're a total beginner, you've never flown a helicopter in your life, or you are coming from one of these contraptions a coaxial helicopter. This is my old CX-2. I call it my warbird. I just keep it flying. I don't keep it pretty. So you're either coming from a coaxial helicopter or you're coming from, you probably already guessed it, the Blade MSR. All right. And here's the interesting thing about the MSR and the 120SR. The 120SR, uh, to those of you who have seen my uh, collective pitch versus fixed pitch uh, videos. Uh, I was stating in there very specifically, and this was regarding the Blade SR, that's a collective pitch helicopter, but I was stating very implicitly that that the Blade SR flew nothing, absolutely nothing like the little MSR here. A lot of people thought that it would, it thought it was just a bigger version of the MSR. It wasn't. It's a collective pitch helicopter. Um, much higher head speed, much more response, completely different ball game. Um, in this case, that's not the scenario. This literally is the bigger brother of the MSR. It flies the same, it, it, it feels the same. Um, you put the battery in this, everything is the, is the same. The only thing different is that it flies, the 120 flies like a bigger uh, heli, it feels like a bigger heli, it handles like a bigger heli. That is both good and bad. It flies and feels like a bigger heli. It's also a little bit more sluggish. And believe me guys, this thing can get away from you mighty fast. Um, you can, uh, in the high rate mode, I'll explain that in a second. In the high rate mode, this thing can get some good, good speed in fast forward flight. Uh, I can get away from you real, real quick because it employs the 45 degree fly bar designed for like ultra stability, if you want to call it that, uh, it does have a tendency to do this uh, pendulum effect like this. Like if you're flying forward and you let go of the stick, it wants to pendulum back and forth. So it, it, with the 45 degree fly bars, um, things can get, they're, they're great for beginners because they're very stable, but things can get a little bit weird. All right, anyway, that's enough about the comparison between the MSR, the coaxial, and the rest of it. Um, another thing I want to point out to the complete beginner with this, if you had the S MSR already, you probably know this, but now I'm using the DX DX6 side to show you this. You might have the, uh, what is it, the LPM4 DSM transmitter. It's the black thing that I showed you in the first video. But just pretend that Everything's set up the same way, regardless of how this transmitter looks. But the SR, like the MSR, has two modes of flight. It has a low rate and a high rate mode. In the low rate, you don't get as much servo throw. Therefore, the helicopter is a little more docile. It, it, it moves and operates a little more slowly, making it a little bit easier to control if you're brand new to this, if you're a complete beginner. Um, when you turn your uh, 120 SR transmitter on, if you have the stock transmitter, by default, it's in the high rate mode. There will be a little LED on the front of the thing, and it will be a steady red. It will be glowing steady red. If you take the right hand, the cyclic stick, and you push it down 
into the casing of the transmitter, it'll make a click, like a switch, and the little red LED will start to blink. That means that it's in the low rate mode. I would suggest that if you're brand new to helicopters, this is your first one, I would suggest you start out in that low rate mode. Um, for you guys who have had the MSR, it's the exact same thing. We have the battery for right now. I'm just going to slide the battery in. I put my battery in with the blue side up, yellow side down because, and let me just show you something here. When you, let me zoom in so you see this. You're putting this battery in to make sure that their balance is correct. You only want to push it to right about there. It is possible to push this black cap of the battery down further to where it meets up with this black plastic piece inside the helicopter, but you don't want to push it that far. Uh, to get proper balances, I'll show you right here. Make sure the blades are straight. It hangs nice, more, much more balanced. That's where you want to push it to. Okay, um, I put it in like this because it seems to be, at least for me, easier to hook up when the lead is over here. All right, so the battery's in. I'm not plugging it in yet. What I'm going to do now, you do the same thing with your, if you have the stock transmitter. What I'm doing now, add my flight mode switch forward. Okay. Turn that on. Let your transmitter sit for about five seconds. And then you go ahead and uh, when you plug in your battery, you zoom. When you plug in your battery, watch the red, set it down as quickly as possible, keep it still, and watch the red LED on the back of the helicopter. Okay, when that red LED comes on, that means that uh, your board, your 5-in-1 uh, and your gyro is initialized and it's ready to fly. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to literally fly it right off of this table. I'm just going to back the camera up a bit and fly it right here. Okay guys, so right now I am in the equivalent of the low rate mode like you guys are with your transmitter. I kind of got it to the side here, but... I'm going to give it a little bit of left trim. I think I had my... I'm just trimming it out there a bit to the left. So it was wanting to yaw right. So we trim it a little to the left. Flying, it's, it's pretty stable. A lot like its uh, little brother, the MSR. That's hands off, hand up, going towards the thing. What I can tell here is it has a tendency to drift a little bit more than the MSR, but that should be expected with a bigger helicopter. So there you go, guys. Let's see how close I can get without crashing it here. There's a bunch of wires right in its way, actually. All right. So there you go, guys. So that's pretty much it for our uh, setup in first flight. Again, like I said, very, very sim uh, simple. It flies very similar to the MSR. It is bigger handles more, uh, you know, a little like a bigger heli than the MSR. A little more sluggish, but also faster. Um, one word to beginners. This helicopter is not meant to be flown in wind. You can, t sooner or later, you want to take it outside. Everybody does. If you take it outside, make sure it is a very, very light breeze to absolutely no wind at all. If you try to fly this in wind, you know, four or five miles an hour or so, uh, it's, it's very, very hard to control. Just because of the nature of a fixed pitch helicopter, uh, it's very hard to control. So make sure there's little to no wind, and then find a nice, good uh, sized area free of trees, fences, other objects, and, uh, you know, practice, get good, and fly away. So that's it, guys. Um, hope you have fun. As always, happy flying. This is Rob from the Hell of Skunk Works, and everybody take care. Bye-bye.